We're going to run over first aid for wounds in poultry. With the likelihood that many of you are sitting with an injured bird as we speak, I'm going to jump straight in with the most crucial considerations first. Firstly, please do not take the wounds that you can see at face value. With as gentle, calm, quiet handling as possible, you will need to do a thorough look over. Check the comb. If it's very pale, we may be dealing with a lot of blood loss, which is not necessarily going to be visible to you. She may actually be bleeding on the inside. If that's the case, if she's weak, she's open mouth breathing, she's very pale, you may wish to euthanize her at this stage depending on her severity. Please check the integrity of the legs and wings very carefully and gently. Check for any fractures or non-functioning limbs. We may have suffered nerve or muscle damage if that's the case. While you're checking her over, watch her head and eyes for pain responses. A bird will usually freeze when she's experiencing pain. So if you hone in on a fracture, for example, she's likely to start just closing her eyes and open mouth breathing. These are signs of severe pain. Tread with caution, okay? We will address fractures in a moment. And if you notice any strange abnormalities of the head and neck, so often a head tilt, maybe walking in a circle or wry neck, which is where the neck twists back on itself or upwards this way, these are all signs of neurological damage, of brain damage. You may give her a little time, a few hours to stabilize and calm down, but if those neurological nerve signs are persistent and a vet is not an option for you, she should be humanely euthanized at this stage. And if you need more info specifically on critical care of a hen at home, please do jump over to our video on that. Otherwise, we'll jump into wounds from here. All right, let's address blood loss here. If you have a bird bleeding from wounds, then as a rule, we would say that losing anything more than 20 to 25% of her blood volume quickly is a cause for concern and we can start losing them at this point. 10% of the body weight is blood. If you have a standard two kg chook, that'll be about 40 mil, which is not very much if they've lacerated a big vessel. Think of a kitchen measuring cup, that's about a sixth of a cup, a small amount. So if you see bleeding, you will want to isolate where that is coming from. If it's already stopped bleeding, then don't touch it yet. We want that clot to form at the end of the blood vessels. And if we're constantly disrupting that clot by wiping it away, it may continue to ooze. If, however, you have active bleeding, you will want to apply pressure with gauze or a clean cloth to stop that bleeding. For smaller bleeds like broken blood feathers or toenails, you can pick up cauterizing powder or silver nitrate sticks over the counter from pharmacies. They do only work for very light, small wounds as well. So for your big lacerations, they won't touch the sides. So let's address open wounds here. If you are dealing with lacerations, they should be sutured closed if they're less than 12 hours old. That will be done through a vet. This is not an at-home job. If you try doing it at home, you will stress the hen beyond belief. You'll end up locking infection in. It's also not legal to perform surgery on your own animal at home here in New Zealand. So if a vet is an option for you, please use them. They will administer antibiotics and pain relief. They will prepare the wound before suturing closed to make sure that there's no infection brooding in there and that it heals nicely. Wounds are not necessarily a simple thing to close. If the laceration is older than 12 hours, they will require more long-term management and you're likely going to need to leave them to heal open. But this is a longer healing process with strict management around hygiene. You'll be battling infection. You may well end up with poor healing in terms of scarring, so it's really not ideal. If it's a severe large laceration, you may need to consider a euthanasia on a case-by-case -case basis. Birds will lose a lot of moisture to the air through open wounds, more so than other species, and they will dehydrate through the skin. So with open wounds, they need stabilization in warmth and humidity. Now the worst wounds for this that I tend to see are ones that cover a large surface area, even if they're only superficial. Often this will be rooster attacks, for example, down the back or traumatic attacks where they've lost a lot of skin. Once they're stabilized and calm, you'll need to flush the wound. 
there's a cheesy line in the vet world that says, dilution is the solution to pollution, okay? So that just means flush, flush, flush to get rid of as much contamination as you possibly can. Start with just warm water, test it on your wrist like a baby's bottle. Remember they will chill easily. And what we're gonna do there is just use clean water until all the crud is gone, any dirt and grass and bits of debris. There's no point in adding disinfectants while you're flushing that junk out because it will simply deactivate the disinfectant. Once the wound looks clean to you looking at it, now we're going to make a weak disinfectant solution, still in warm, clean water. Iodine is a great one to reach for, or chlorhexidine if you have access to it. Most people tend to have some iodine on hand. If the iodine is too concentrated, it's actually, ironically, going to inhibit wound healing. So we make it into what we call a weak tea solution. So you add just enough to the water until you have what looks like a weak tea, a light brown, but you can still see through the water. And then flush again, flush, flush, flush. Have some towels there so you're mopping up the water as it runs out of the wound. We don't want to soak the whole bird in water and chill it. Avoid using soap. It's really irritating to an open wound, as most people will know from personal experience. I do want to mention the air sacs here because if you have puncture wounds through the skin, those punctures may actually extend into the air sacs, which are big air holding chambers inside the bird, part of their respiratory system. If you flush fluid into those puncture wounds, your fluid solution will actually go straight into the air sacs and they will drown. So just a word of warning there, infection in the air sacs is very difficult to treat. You certainly can't do it at home. Play that one on a case by case basis. So what does our aftercare look like? How do we actually protect that wound? There are a couple of ointments that we use really commonly in birds that you can get over the counter yourself from a pharmacy. These are called silver sulfur diazine or medical manuka honey. Side note, please do not use anything that has a corticosteroid in it. This will cause complications in the bird, so avoid those. Those are usually going to be something that includes hydrocortisone sold for anti-itch purposes or allergies. Sometimes those are coupled with antiseptics and over-the-counter products, so don't get caught out there. Do not use anything with steroids in it. Silver sulfadiazine ointment is used with great success. Just make sure you don't apply it anywhere near the eyes. So that's frequently used in clinics, as is medical manuka honey. Some people may think manuka honey is a fluffy kind of treatment. It's not. It's really very good and is used in vet and human clinics as well. I'm not talking about your open jar of stuff in the kitchen with a peanut butter knife contaminating it. You do want the sterile medical grade stuff from a pharmacy or vet clinic. Manuka honey not only helps prevent infection, but it promotes rapid wound healing as well. The honey is inactivated by pus, so the more fluid there is seeping from that wound, the more honey you'll need to apply, and the more frequently you'll need to change that bandage and redress it. Whichever ointment you're using, use as little as you need. We want to avoid matting the surrounding feathers unnecessarily, as that's gonna have longer term complications with things like waterproofing. Whether you apply a bandage or not depends on the wound and where it's located on the body. Sometimes you'll find that without some really fancy bandaging techniques, it's really difficult to do at home. But if you can, ideally a wound should be bandaged with your ointment and then a non-adhesive dressing and changed daily. When I say non-adhesive, I mean the dressing that's sitting on the wound is non-adhesive, meaning it doesn't stick. We use adhesive dressings deliberately for specific reasons, but they are more painful to remove and change for the bird. So go with your non-adhesives unless it's under the direction of a vet. You can and may be forced to use a dressing that sticks around the edges like a giant sticking plaster. If the wound is somewhere like on the back where you cannot wrap a bandage around anything. And you can get those easily from a pharmacy. The other complication with birds, of course, is the feathers. You cannot go plucking feathers in a conscious bird. That would be horrendously painful. We do do it under general anaesthetic where they just fall out under the influence of the drugs, preparing them for surgery. But that's not something you're gonna do at home. So again, depending where it is, bandaging may or may not be an option. Whether you've put a bandage on or not, that bird needs to remain confined 
and in a very clean environment. If a bandage becomes contaminated even with wet rainwater running over the skin, all you're doing now is holding bacteria against the wound and making things worse. So clean, dry, protected from other nosy hens that will want to peck at the wound. If a patient is bothering it themselves, you can actually get little cones of shame for them as well online or from vet clinics. Final note on bandaging. Be aware of bandaging the legs when you're wrapping a bandage around the limb. Accidentally doing it too tight, creating a tourniquet, is actually really easy to do in bird legs. This cuts off the blood supply and what ends up happening is you end up with a dead limb that turns black and falls off. Okay, so be careful that you're not going too tight. Predator attacks require a mention of their own because usually we avoid using antibiotics unless there is an infection or an indication to use them. However, with predator attacks, this is an exception where we will give antibiotics straight off the bat. Predators like cats and dogs carry really nasty bacteria in their mouths and they can develop sepsis, a septic blood infection, and die within 24 hours. If you are dealing with a predator attack, you do want to visit a vet, if at all possible. I won't go into fractures in a deep way here because it's really a veterinary job with pain relief and appropriate treatment. I will say that bird bones heal quicker than mammals, but there are a number of things that make their bones unique and what they need to heal is very different depending where the fracture is and what type of fracture we're dealing with. Some need surgery with pins and plates, some need splinting, some end up with amputations. All of them require high levels of pain relief. I will not give any recommendations here about at-home treatments for breaks other than to say, if you find an open wound where a break is exposed, we call that an open fracture. It's common in birds because they have so little muscle or fat sitting over many of their bones. So if you see this, an open fracture, and you don't have a vet, you will need to euthanize that bird. You cannot treat an open fracture without antibiotics and resetting the bone. All right, we'll leave it there. All the best, good luck.